Shirt Show. All right, let's go. Shirt Show! Talking Shirt! Shirt Show! Talking Shirt! Shirt Show! Talking Shirt! Shirt Show! Talking Shirt! Shirt Show! Shirt Show! All right! Episode 130 of Shirt Show! We're talking with Josh from Lancaster Print House in Pennsylvania. Let's go! Hey there, handsome. Hey, boo. Hey, I like your jacket. Thanks, man. Hmm. Like Looks your so cozy. It is cozy, and um, I'm ready for. Uh... Looks so stylish, like you're ready for the mountain. Yeah, that's what I was gonna you're, do after this. You're gonna go shredding or something. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, what I do. Fr- get some fresh powder. Yeah, it's um, living the dream, basically. Yeah, I get it. How? 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 Oh, oh. wait! Check! 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 Hey, check! 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 Can you hear me, dude? Your voice sounds amazing. Yeah, I know. It's, um, how would you say soothing? Soothing. Yeah. Mm. Um, I don't know how it really is for people that listen to the show, but <laughs> prior to the show, I was always known for like slurring all my words together. And my dad's the same way where like when people in public hear us speaking, they have no idea what we're saying because we just kind of lazy. I'm the same way. Just, like, yeah, we just like lazy, put all our words together. Yeah, that's how that's how it is. That's how that's how I've been also and i listened like a hundred episodes ago or whatever i started listening to some of them back and i'm like what am i saying i don't know yeah can't even understand myself (laughs) Mm -hmm. i that's why for years i've like gone on fiverr or something and hired someone to record my voicemail so that people could actually understand me i thought you were just going to say record all these episodes for you so this is yeah this isn't your boy. <laughs> this isn't even Dylan. Like Dylan's over there. Like my name's Ivan. Right. And you say something and he interprets it back. And right. then... he's writing it on cue cards. Well, Ivan, you <clears throat> your voice... he's he's much more handsome and like sculpted and like Impo- impossible. Godlike. Not not possible. Mm-hmm. Not possible. Dude, I was watching that um and there's like, a, you know, that viral um, video of that kid that, you know, loves Corn. clams. No, well, there's that. But the killing, the, the, the actually, clams the, one? the kid that's named Dylan, his name is Dylan. Mm-hmm. He looks like you. Cool. And he acts like you, loves talks clams. like you. Yeah, Same but guy. He, he hates fish, though, but he likes clams. Um, Same guy. And he loves meat. Dude, this, no. this kid is my kid. I mean, <laughs> no, no, the kid is you. So it's like footage of you when you were younger. That's younger. released. That's out now. Yeah. Like they're, you know, digging up stuff from your past mm-hmm. and releasing it because, you know, people want to know, like, what was Dylan like <laughs> as a kid? You know, like what was loves, he? loves the clam, hates fish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Still likes clams. Mm-hmm. Hey, what, what you drinking there? Got a little DP. Nice. Yeah. Got mm-hmm. some water. Yeah. I have water as well, um, but you know, I also have, I also have some peanuts. <clears throat> a little bit of peanuts. Want me to feed you some? Oh, throw it. Okay. Hold on. Ready? No. Catch. One more. One Got more. It. They make three threes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they're so delicious. Pretty good. Honey roasted. Oh, gross. How's your week going so far, bud? How was Thanksgiving? Those are two questions, and I'll answer them um, in chronological order of how those events occurred. Um, Thanksgiving was fulfilling. It was chill, I think is the right word people are saying these days. Very yeah. chill, lots of food, lots of family. Oh, 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 oh. It was fantastic. Nice. Is that what super, I said? S- super lame, yeah. but nice. Yeah. That's okay. That's did I like you my... did you make it the food? Like, did you make the turkey? Yeah. <clears throat> no, oh, yeah. well, we did no no no. We didn't have turkey. What the fuck? 
Uh, not a lot of people like turkey. That's not accurate at all. Um, maybe turkey sandwiches, but turkey as something that's hot, you know, not a lot of people like that. The um, fuck is wrong with you? I didn't say I didn't. I was thinking of you my... did. You you sternly said oh, I wouldn't eat turkey. Fuck that. Y- you hear you're not even married. Things you hear things that people don't say, but that's okay. I can hear um, your voice. We all we oh, all fucking have liar. our we all have our um biases okay what did you eat um, then? probably fucking quinoa or some shit are you gonna be nice yeah like a tofurkey with some fucking are you gonna be nice kale? and support- supportive and hype me up i'm trying to hype you up right now but i just found out you're un-american <laughs> and you don't like fucking turkey um i ordered a honey baked ham do you know what that is do you have that up there <sighs> yeah ham's delicious i'll give you that but that's for christmas not for thanksgiving for whatever you fucking want it, because we're I'm a grown ass man. That is true. I I appreciate that about you. Um, we, so I or, you know you order it, you go online. It's pretty neat. They have it down. Like you go online, you order how much you want. You picked the you pick the day and time to pick that shit up, and you're emailed a QR code. Boom! You know, you get you pull up to the store because it's crowded. Honey baked ham. I know you got a honey baked ham, but where do you order it from? Honey baked ham. The place is called Honey Baked Ham. <laughs> yeah. Is that real? <laughs> There's no yeah, fucking way that's real. I thought you said you. That There's you a store that just sells ham. Hey, it's Missouri, baby. Dude, that's yeah. fucking weird. That's awesome if that's real, but um, I feel like that's. I feel like it was out of some guy's fucking van, and his name is Honey Baked Ham. Yeah, I got it when I got the the boner pills. I was at the gas station. That makes total sense. <laughs> and he was like, "Hey, do you want a ham?" <laughs> You also hey. want a ham? He's like, hey, you like boners and ham? I got both. <laughs> Not bone in ham. Boners in ham. He's going to be a bone in that ham. Give it up. Um, but so you go there and no, like no joke. There's velvet ropes because they have so many people, like thousands of hams, a wall of hams. You go in and they have um like it roped off and you go in the entrance and they i feel like i'm getting punked so hard right now this cannot be real and you and you and they have samples of stuff like hey you want to try a sample and then you sample walk up what? And you, more ham there's turkey there's ham there's whatever the fuck you want i know it's weird it's honey baked ham and they have turkeys but they do honey baked turkeys <laughs> or something but you go and you you give them uh you know your pickup code or whatever and then they get your ham and I got this the day before. So I got this on Wednesday. And then I you go home and they recommend serving it just at room temp. But we we like it just a little bit warmer than that. And so I didn't have to, you know, make the the meat. I made everything else. So like I made bis uh, not biscuits, I made cornbread, I made mashed potatoes, I made stuffing, and I made green beans. Yeah. It was it was okay. Like it was okay. Everybody ate it all. It was fun. How about you? I'm You're not being punked, punked, man. You're fucking not. I'm that fucking, was, that's... I don't even know what to say right now. My world is different. Do I lie? Do I lie to you? Uh, Look at sometimes. Me. Yeah. Look at my eyes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I sometimes do. I sometimes do. This is real, though. <laughs> okay. Well, Ooh, my, wow. world, my, my world is altered that there's a place called Honey Make Tan. Hey. And I um, don't have one. Um, well, you might have one. I feel like I need, I feel like I need to franchise this. Check this out. Can you read that? Yeah. It says honey baked ham. And then it says find a store. Yeah. I'm going to check to see if they have New York. So New York, Mm -hmm. that's where you live, right? Somewhere there, somewhere up there. I've never heard of this in my, like. They have one in um, New Jersey. Yeah. We don't go there. It smells. They have one in Edison, New Jersey, and Middletown, New Jersey, and Hartsdale, New Jersey, and Watchung, New Jersey. Why not New York? That's bullshit, don't you think? Yeah, I think it's horseshit. No dice, bro. New Jersey. Mm, that's okay. Well, your Thanksgiving, how was it? I saw you were hunting in a you were in a hunting lodge. I, I went to my family's hunting cabin. And we made breakfast in the and and like over a flame, 
And uh, yeah, it was wonderful. I sat down with my uncle and my dad and my brother-in-law and his buddy and just had breakfast. Shot the shit, told some stories. And then I've been kind of a piece of shit when it comes to hunting this year. So I didn't go get my license. And so (laughs) when they went to go hunt on Thanksgiving, I said, see you later. And I went home and I peeled two bags of potatoes. Five pounders? Two bags. I I did the same thing. Yeah, I did a five pounder, peeled them. Yeah. Well, you're a pro Mm -hmm. at peeling potatoes, so. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I've done that. Um, Mm -hmm. I was on the potato potato duty. Or spud buds. Um, And yeah, so I just did that and then set the table and ate Thanksgiving and... Took a little nap ski in my chair, and then I went to the playground with my daughter, and she rode her roller skates while I shot some hoops. And then I went back home and watched, what did I watch? I feel like we watched uh, Slumberland, Mm. and then I went to bed. You know what we watched? No. Where the crawdads cry or some shit like that. Sing. Whatever. Yeah. More like cry. Right. It was a sad movie. I didn't cry. Yeah, you but... did. Softy. <laughs> um, I, well, I I don't know. It wasn't that sad. It was sort of mm-hmm. a little disturbing at times. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Other than that, just kind of... This weekend, I came into the shop on Saturday, and I haven't done that in a while. I haven't had a day to just kind of fuck around and let putts and get random projects done. So I did a bunch of that. So that felt good. On which day? Mm, Saturday or Sunday. I can't the remember. day I texted you um, my feet pics. Oh, it was Saturday. Yeah, because I was, I was here. Remember? Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't think it was Saturday. Definitely okay. wasn't. It was... Sunday. Sunday? Sunday. Definitely Sunday. Yeah, it was Sunday. And we um, worked on some shirt show stuff. Yeah. That sounds awesome, man. I'm, I'm happy for you. Not bad. You see how I was very gentle with it? Yeah, it there? was so slow and gentle. I was, cur- I just kind of just caressed it, blew on a little mm-hmm. bit. Yep. You like Thanks. it like that, don't you? Mm-hmm. That slight breeze. D. It all starts with a screen. It does. And whether it is new stretches or restretches, Frank and his team do it the best. By far. To find out more, go to graphicscreenfashion.com. F F F F F. Rank.com. Or greatfuckingscreens.com. Yeah. Um, tell Ivan he's doing a great job because that voice, the way you were talking just then, your mm-hmm. translator, your interpreter, or whatever dude Mm -hmm. he's killing it he's killing it i'm the only one in fact there's i'm the only one that knows your real voice when we (laughs) which is um it makes me feel special it's it's super high pitched it makes me feel really (laughs) special i i don't know i Mm -hmm. feel like we have a connection that way we're Mm -hmm. connected cleaning screens is no fun but easy way makes it funner Their line of eco-friendly chemicals will help you keep your screens and your shop clean. Check them out at easyway.com, easyway. It's the easiest way, by far. Far. Super Mm -hmm. far. Next, we have Action Engineering, and they make all kinds of accessories that printers need. Like, can you name a couple for us, or one? Doesn't matter. One. Just one? Yeah. Uh, Pallets. Squeegees. Flood bars. Do you know what one is? Rex. I think you have trouble sometimes, don't you? That's okay, though. Well, we all... I don't know if you know this, but one is the loneliest number. Go check them out at actionengineering.com. <laughs> you like how I left you hanging there? Yeah, yeah, that's usually how And I level up your shop. <laughs> Look, does your team need some design help? then what you want to do is go to 1-900-HOT-STUFF and get in touch with Nick or Lucas or AKA Nick or Lucas. 
and they will tuck you in and kiss you goodnight. That's creepy as fuck. But they probably would because okay. Nick's a fucking dreamboat. He is. I think that he's offered uh, his room, his spare bedroom up to me and Joanne to to live there. Probably because he wants to kiss you goodnight. I'm thinking that's really the, the reason is that he wants <laughs> uh, to tuck us in and kiss us goodnight. And... Little burrito. And here, here is here's an argument. Do you would you agree? Is it fair to say that if we all got tucked in and kissed goodnight, that we would be happier? That's true. And, I think so. I mean, that's yeah. That's maybe what the world is missing right now. Hmm. I think. So. Well, um, graphic source. Graphic they, source can provide that for you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, 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 Chromaline choosing the right emulsion for your shop is complicated. And that's why we love Chromaline. Go check out our bud Kev, who is known as the emulsion guru on Instagram or go to chromaline.com to watch his videos and learn all about the screen room. Yes. Super, super smart guy. When it comes to that, our guest today is round two, Josh Seacat. What a dope name that is! Like that's, yeah, I like it. I want to be Andy C. It's like a, he's like a, he's like a water panther, right? Like, what if your name was Dylan Seabass? That'd be That'd pretty suck. cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of that, Dumb and Dumber was on over the holiday. We, we mm-hmm. caught like an hour of it or something, and dude, it can just be on twenty four seven, looping in our house, and I'd be, I'd be fine with it. Yeah. I don't know if we told this full story yet, but I feel like we had to a little while ago about our fucking troubles. But me and Andy have done everything possible to make this the best possible show for all of you. So fucking be thankful. But sometimes <laughs> when we try these new programs that we think are awesome are going to give you the best possible audio and video quality, they mm-hmm. fucking back, backstab us and delete the whole episode. Yeah. So um, here we are for the second time. Doing an episode all over again. So, good thing um, is we're gonna try uh, try to do better this time than we did the first time. We are. So we're gonna try and do better. And no, we're not gonna try. We're gonna do better yeah, than we did. We It'll be better. And it's been a few weeks anyway. And so since mm-hmm. then, Josh, I'm sure has something new. Something went on over there at the shop, and he we got his new actually, press, I think, I think you're right. So we could say, yeah. hey. Well, tell us about your new press, you know, and then yeah, he, yeah. he would have something to say, right? Because yeah. he didn't know about it then. He's here. What do you think? Oh, 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 oh. Did you stretch. let him in? No, I'm stretching. Okay, good. I got to stretch in, dude. Yeah. Um. While we're stretching, if you could quickly, if you're watching this on YouTube, if you could hit that thumbs up, that would rule. Appreciate you. Love you. If you're listening, if you could like, pop on whatever platform it is and leave us a little review or rate us star wise. And if you're listening to this and you did that already, maybe share it on your stories of like where you are and where you're listening to it. No matter where you are, even if it's R rated. Oh, we got, we got another, we got a fucking, uh, we got another review. Okay. Check this out. November 21st. Wow. Nutpad 12 gave us a review. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love our listeners. Did you say Nutpad? <laughs> nutpad. And oh, yeah, Nutpad. N-U-T-P-A-D 12 fucking says, um, he says, I used to hate Mondays. Now I look forward to getting up on Monday mornings and listening to this shirt show. Five stars, baby. Hell yeah, Nutpad. You're fucking, I love you, Nutpad. <laughs> that's awesome it's so good um yeah let josh in here <laughs> i wish i knew who <laughs> me too i fucking love no bad already josh 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 is it working josh it is working fucking okay <laughs> I was just getting ready to send some some uh, gifts to Andy, waiting <laughs> yeah. for you guys. Um, mm-hmm. So what's up? Round two, huh? Fuck, I, I don't know. Yes, Maybe it'll be round three. Maybe this one will get to yeah, lose. Let's not well. lose it this time. Mm-hmm. How you guys doing? Not bad. Not bad. Still hard to do these in the middle of the day? 
Yep, hard as fuck, but you know we're yeah. gonna do it. There's a hundred percent chance we're gonna get interrupted here. So just just so you guys know. Yeah. I'm, I'm okay, okay with it. that. Yeah, me too. And yeah. I love how Setting when I up. I texted you earlier and I just was because Dylan texted me and he was like, Oh, uh, so so I love how I'm doing his voice. Oh yeah, my voice is immediately <laughs> a fucking bridge um, troll. No, he, he he asked me, he said so like one thirty and um, you know, cause we have these time zone things and I'm like, no, no. And so anyway, I just texted you back to make sure you knew it was, we were going on at one Eastern. And then I said, do you have your AirPods fully charged? And you said, yes, father. <laughs> <laughs> Papa Andy, making sure we're all in line. Uh, just, ba- mm-hmm. just babysitting all the guests. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Better to make sure then. He's good at it. Yeah, we yeah. well, the reason why I asked him is because we're setting new, we're opening up new possibilities for guests to not just do Sunday, but to do weekdays. So we agreed on like, let's try to do like 130 Eastern so that like I'm back from lunch and I am chill and we're good. And, and then he said, no, you're at 1230. <laughs> you know what time, you know what, you know what time 130 Eastern is in Missouri? It's the time Dylan doesn't want to do it. It's 1230. Yeah. Well, you eat a fucking so, banana and half a yogurt for lunch. Okay. I I didn't even get lunch today. I forgot the leftover turkey and mashed potatoes at home. So You're welcome. Don't, don't tell Andy. It's a sore subject. He hates turkey. What? <laughs> Not true. But you're welcome. You to eat, eat ham? Right. We did. Yeah, we had a ham. Uh, See? That's uh, what I said. <laughs> moving on. Yeah. I'm gonna bring I'll, this I'll episode last. down. I'll make it. <laughs> I'll make it till the end. I'll be fine. There's a lot of days I go without lunch. Just you know, before you know it, it's three o'clock, and yeah, don't want to spoil dinner, so you just have a snack and move on. So we did this episode a couple weeks ago, and we kind of talked about all the things. Um, yeah, what has happened in your life between then and now? Um, so and then, we, we'll, and then we'll do a your life recap. Okay. <laughs> uh, maybe we'll start at like age 25 though. Um, okay. so we, I think the last time I was telling you guys that we couldn't fill that whole like prep position, uh, you know, like getting the job cards ready and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so we actually did fill that, but we split it into two jobs, um, so we strictly hired a screen tech. Um, everything screens. Uh, so they'll do that. That girl is going to do just screens all day, every day. Um, you know, unless like, there's like burning, like coating, burning, uh, reclaim, stretching, restretching, taping. Yeah. That's nice. going to be her full time job. Um, yeah, that's what we I do think too. we, yeah, I think we're, I think with the new press now and, and running two presses, we're going to need that as a full time uh, thing. Um, and then we also, so then the other side of that is, you know, the, the rest of the prep work, counting in garments and, and staging them and that sort of thing. So we're currently trying to fill that. Um, and we had another girl that, so I interviewed the, the two that I, I think I told you guys about, I interviewed both of them. So I've offered jobs to both of them. Um, so I'm, I'm just waiting on the second one to get back to me. And then, so hopefully she'll take that and hopefully that's, that's all figured out. I love how in our last conversation, we were peer pressuring you so hard to hire one person. And now you hired what, like four people since the last (laughs) time? I hired, I hired two, but I did not hire the one that you told me to hire, which I think was like an account rep, basically like a customer service type person. Mm -hmm. Um, We are talking about it. And I think that we'll probably do it after the new year. Mm -hmm. I think for me, like, and I don't know about you guys, but I think for me, it's always like, you know, I think you get to a certain size where just adding a payroll isn't really a thing anymore. But yeah. when you're at my size, you know, adding a payroll is kind of a big deal. And then to add two is even a bigger deal. So I think for us, we kind of want to feel comfortable with the two new additions. And then we'll add from there. Like, I don't want to just yeah. throw payrolls. You know, I don't want to just hire six people and then find out like shit, like, you know, this is hard to support. Um, and I don't yeah. know what size shop you get at where that's no longer like, fuck it, we'll just hire three people right now. Cause that's the three that we need. You know, I don't know where that shop size 
difference is, but I, I don't think we're there yet. I feel like that's always the case um, that it matters, but it's just one of those things like I, I usually try to hire at different times of the year. Like right now I wouldn't, I am trying to hire somebody because I had to fire somebody, but like for a new position, like something in growth mode, not just sort of like replacing somebody right. I wouldn't hire until like March or April. Because I don't want to have them because, now and then have them sit around and do nothing all winter long. Yeah, and slow. Yeah. And then see, and we're we're super busy. Like I've I've heard you say this before that you get slow this time of year. Like yeah. we'll be super busy through probably the end of January and then we'll slow down for like a month, month and a half. Yeah. Um this is like from I would say from October through January is by far our busiest time of the year. By yeah, like we're usually like leaps and bounds slow from basically new year's to like end of february yeah yeah i think it's different depending i mean you and i are in similar markets so i've always mm-hmm. been surprised when you said that you're slow this time of the year um yeah. well it's yeah, changed it's- you know what i mean like our market has changed a lot since we were since we started like yeah. a lot of it was yeah. bands and then bands aren't really on tour and you know and then it turned into just all these markets that basically it's like festivals and summer things and stuff. Right. And then, right. you know, Christmas to spring, it's kind of like, well, nothing's going on. So we're just kind of slow, but now we're getting into more and more like corporate st- style orders and stuff like that. And they order all year long. So, yeah, um, we, sh- we should, um, we should include Andy in this conversation. I think he's thinking about ham too much. I think so too. He's muted right now. Oh. oh no i was listening i think that um <laughs> i'm just trying to get something to, to for show and tell but i um i don't know we are similar to dylan in that our januaries are slower i never i shouldn't say never but i it's extremely rare if i hire after thanksgiving in right. fact um maybe in october but often not because you know, we are in full, like balls to the wall, pedal to the metal mode. I don't want to have to train anyone. And also I know that it's going to taper off when we get to the holidays. And I just don't want a new person on the payroll that I have to carry through, you know, yeah. eight weeks, let's say, of, I wouldn't call it slow, but just not, right. um, there, there are certainly days where we finish up a little early and I just don't want to have to you know, be responsible for that additional payroll. And so I would prefer to keep them on the next tax year. Tax Plus it's year. also, it's also weird too. think about it for them, like starting a new job and you're excited mm-hmm. and you get there and you're like, wow, this is boring as fuck. Like it's slow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then when summer hits, they're like, oh my God, like this isn't what I signed up for. And it's like, dude, this I did. I did kind of like preface it, you know, that, that we are super busy, like, we're not going to get fully trained, but I guess my worry with not hiring was that a, like we've needed the positions for a while. So they've, they've needed to be filled for a while. And we've, we had a hard time finding quality people to fill those positions. So I didn't want to let the two that like finally came in and could do, you know, exactly what we needed. I didn't want to let them walk. And then, you know, two months from now we're in the same position where we're trying to find the right people And we couldn't find them. And I guess my other thought was even, even with slowing down in January, you know, which is only a a month and a half away, like that's the perfect time for someone to learn how to stretch and restretch screens. That's the perfect time. Yeah. For like anything training wise, like that to me is like, I want to have them in so that they can see what busy looks like and then we'll slow down and then I'll, you know, and then we'll, we'll discuss like, Hey, like this is the slow time, you know, we're, we're going to get busy again, but let's utilize this time to get you up to speed so that it's, you know, you feel a little more comfortable when we're, that's a, that's a smart busy again. That's a smart strategy. I like that. Um, and that's why I say it's rare that I, I would hire, uh, you know, late in the year, but you're right. Like if the right person comes along that you feel would be a perfect fit, you hate to pass on that, Mm -hmm, you know, and, and, and then we, you know, you're trying to look for somebody in a couple of months and you can't find them. So you're better off, like you said, hiring them 
spending the extra money while it's slow or whatever, put them in some sort of different training and have that person. So I'm, I yeah. wouldn't say it's, um, it never happens because I have before, you know, it's happened where somebody came through. I'm like, wow, they would be great add to our, to our team and we hire them. But most of the time we do not. So you texted me something though. You text, uh, we were talking, I think it was like, yeah, last week and you texted me, you got this press installed and then something broke. And I'm like, I, I, I replied back, WTH, what happened? So full disclosure, it is not a brand new press. It is a supposedly mm. in quotation marks, fully <laughs> reconditioned press. Got it. What happened was the reconditioners left a bolt out of the double index piston or whatever it is. I don't know. I, I'm new to the press, so but there was a missing bolt. So the, the thing literally came back, came out of its sleeve, and then we had to get it back in in order to keep running. <laughs> Hindsight, we probably should have went brand new, but we were trying to get something before the holidays, which right. we were about three weeks behind on doing. Um, did you did they make it good though like did they come yeah they, they well they did yeah they i wouldn't say they came and fixed it um they sent the bolt <laughs> i fixed it um we we were in a position where we needed a second auto and not only a second auto a much bigger auto for a very long time um i held off on getting that auto because we bought this new space um and we're moving and we had all these expenses and I'm the kind of person that like, I'll, I, I don't, I, and maybe I'm just not good at forecasting. Um, but I, I don't like to use forecasting as like a means to justify spending a, a good amount of money. You know, right. I'll wait until it feels uncomfortable to spend a good amount of money. Mm -hmm. And this time I probably waited just a little bit too long. Um, and so we, it kind of put us out on a new press just due to the, the, you know, the, the turnaround times on it. Um, so if you're going to do approvals while we have this, while we record, you're going to have, to, we're all going to have to do approval. So we all want to see it. Let's see what it's it looks not, like. It's not. So we're working. Okay. So we don't have CTS. So we're working on tri -lock. So I wanted to. I wanted to, we did, we made some adjustments. We're still filmed. So we made some adjustments and I told him just to print one off and I want to see exactly what it looks like. Like, in other words, don't adjust it before you, um, print it. Cause I want to then be able to backtrack and see how close they got where, uh, yeah, like how close we got and where the film was off in order to not get I don't want to say perfect results because I'm not expecting perfect results without CTS, but very, very close. So How close did you get? Uh, it's pretty good. I would say two colors. The one color is a good bit off. The other one that's off is is just a little bit off, but the one color is dead nuts on. So we're getting there. Um, and this was all stuff that I can't show you that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh this was all stuff that the the press tech when he came in to install this machine he's he had a shop in you know 20 years or whatever he was all film and you know a lot of people blow smoke in this industry and and he mentioned that he was very good i'll say that at film and so he sent us you know he showed us some stuff and i think we're getting closer um but we're not we're not efficient enough yet with it. So we're, we're what still, was, what was the new press that you got? Uh, 14 color sportsman, um, EXG. Oh, well dude, those are, uh, those have a nice indexer too, right? Yeah. It's, I mean, dude, it's compared to the diamondback that we had. I mean, it's night and day. There's, yeah. it has everything that it has every problem that we used to have solved. So, yeah. and that's kind of why I got it, right? Because I could have waited. I, I really, obviously, like you really want a new press, like a 14 color Cobra would have been even better. But I don't for know. Us, like the, well, yeah. I mean, I don't know either for sure. 
But well, it depends on which Cobra. I like, like the table. Them. I like the I like the lack of table. You know, carousel. You like heads down. down. Yeah. Yeah, heads down is cool. Um, I wouldn't buy. But anyways. Any. Yeah. Yeah. Your ahead. the point. Your indexer though is a screw, right? So uh, I'm, I'm sure that it is if it's the EXG and it's fast as shit. Those are badasses. Yeah, it's, like, yeah, yeah. We actually have to turn it down. We have to select it to larger pallets on hoodies. Otherwise it flips the the strings up onto the board. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it, it checked all the boxes, right? And that's kind of why I was just like, well, fuck it. Let's just get this press because um, it's going to be a major upgrade from what we have. If we can do what we've been doing with what we have, Mm -hmm. We'll be able to do that same quality, but four times as fast on this press. You know, we got out a revolver on everything that we've done since we got it. You know, the micros are amazing. Um, it index is amazing. It's quiet. It doesn't make a mess. You know, the diamondback that we have is all air. So, oh, it's an air indexer too. Wow. Yeah. So, like air indexer, air mm. everything. So, like the squeegees and flood bars after printing plastic were just trashed. I mean, it took forever to clean them you know, it made a mess everywhere. And so it was a major upgrade. And that's why for us, like it's, it's perfect because it's exactly what we needed. It might not be exactly what I wanted, but it's exactly what we needed and it'll carry us a, a long distance until yeah, we yeah. can get exactly what I want. Yeah. That's awesome. Hell yeah. Yeah. Um, it's so weird how, when like that Diamondback, when you first got it, uh, I don't know what you were coming from, but Let's say it manual. was it was it a manual. So like you get this diamond yeah. back and it's amazing. You're like, holy Oh, I was over the moon. Right? Because you everything changed and now you're so much better. But then all of a sudden, you know, you get used to, to that. <laughs> and then now you have this sportsman, this this uh 14 color sportsman, and that's the new norm, you know. And so, oh, this diamondback's trash or whatever. But it's just so funny how, you know, <laughs> we progress through as we as we grow. And what we become accustomed to and used to and how we how we judge things. Because I remember when I was in my garage, I would have just died to have a diamond back. You know, that was a dream, almost like a um, just almost unreachable, you know, dream like one day. Right. But um, well, anyway, the thing it's like you get what you're ready for, too. You know what I mean? Like if yeah, you went from manual to the diamond back, you were still in your garage and it was perfect. It was the perfect fit at the perfect time. It and was now you're in this big that, space. Mm -hmm. At that point, like in the garage, you know, when we were in the garage, it was a, it was a nice size garage. It was like 1800 square feet, but it, you know, for a garage, that's pretty good. You know, I mean, so, and then, but the problem was it had support poles. So unless we wanted to re-engineer the second floor so that we could get rid of the support poles, you only had X amount of distance between wall and poles. So the Diamondback right. was the only seven color press being made at the time and i still think ever that would mm -hmm. fit in that um you know in that space so for us when we got that i mean we were like like i mean we i mean it was amazing to go from manual to that right but i'm saying it was, it, was, it, like, it was manageable like you went from yeah. a manual to being like oh i can handle the seven color diamondback like it's not like daunting or like overwhelming do you but think imagine yeah. if you went from a manual to a 14 color sportsman exg Right. Do you think, um, nice, actually, <laughs> is it, do you think that if, how do I put this? Do you think it's better to start like you did or to progress like you did, you know, to start on a manual and then get a pretty good press and then get a better press? You know what I mean? Do, is that a better way to hone your skills and learn? Does that make you better, ultimately make you better? I guess is my question, you know? So I, I just finished listening to Brandon's um episode uh mm -hmm. took me a long time to get through it every car ride to and from work i had a phone call um so i just finished listening to it and i i think it's it might be different for certain scenarios but i think the majority of the people could benefit from starting out the way we all started out uh, I, I think brandon's kind of a rare scenario where he was kind of brought into the shop and then kind of just you know, like he said, they were short staffed and he starts printing and for him to go out from what he was doing to manual, then to grow to auto, like that makes no sense because the guy is amazing on, a, on an auto. He knows an auto, he runs an auto. Like, it, and I think, you know, for me, I think learning all of this stuff manually and then, you know, like saying, okay, I, I did this with a manual press, like this print is 
fucking awesome and it came off a manual press and then you get an auto and you're like holy shit like i thought that print was awesome like look at this print and then you know you get better equipment and bigger and better and it just keeps getting better i do think that there's some value there to learning what i would i guess call the old-fashioned way you know i think all of you mm -hmm. guys started the same way manuals and little dryers and yeah. you know I, I think there's definitely value there i think it i think it teaches you a lot more about the process and understanding of like how important the you know the pressure and all of that kind of stuff is because you've seen yeah. it on a manual and you failed at it on a manual um, but i think like someone like brandon who kind of came into this shop i think for him like that's the he made the perfect move it would have been stupid for him to go back to or for him to go to manual from where he was i also think that like it's nobody's gonna like this but this is the hard way it's just like not having money and having piece of shit equipment you know yeah. what i mean like yeah. when you're in the garage and you buy what you can afford and it's a hunk of shit and it doesn't hold registration and you learn how to use it and make it work and you learn all those little like tricks and things to like get it to work and then you upgrade to a little bit better piece of equipment and then you learn that thing's quirks and tricks and whatever and then by the time you can afford like a real legit like great piece of equipment you already have this like tool chest of skills that you learned from the pieces of shit you know what i mean yeah. like you weren't babied yeah. the entire time with like oh this press holds perfect registration you're like no i had to print on something that when i pulled the squeegee down, or the screen down i had to slightly torque it to the left in order to like Dude, keep it in i think it makes you better <laughs> hold it with I, your knee with one right that's what i mean like you have to be like yeah. okay well when i printed on this press using oversized screens that weren't meant for this press i had to have someone from the office stand on the other side of the press so it didn't flip over it's like <laughs> shit like that that like you it makes you respect the new piece of equipment you know what i mean you're not just like True. walking into it with trust fund money and you're like oh it I also have makes you, it also makes you like super at least for me, it, like I am highly appreciative of what we've been able to accomplish here, you know? So I think it, for me, at least like it makes me appreciate my customers even more. It makes me appreciate everybody in here even more because we've been able to get to this point. You know, we just got this 14 color press and, you know, last April or I'm sorry. Yeah. This past April, a couple six months ago, we just got this sprint 3000. Like we got all of that stuff because of our customers, because of our employees, because of, you know, these things. Right. And so for me as an owner, like I am highly appreciative of all of that because I started with a two color silver press on a old dining room table and burned shirts with a flash. Like you have this, trajectory and like this path through this industry yeah. and at least for me like it makes me appreciate everything so much more and that's probably why i'm like anal about our shop and like cleanliness and making it look nice and keeping the equipment in tip-top shape is it clean right. because brandon said it was pretty filthy yeah <laughs> i know well it was clean till he came in and started spilling ink all over the place right. um so i agree with this a thousand percent and i remember when my kid played USTA uh, tennis. He was really great at tennis. He didn't start great, but he started with like a crummy racket and crummy shoes. And you know what I'm saying? And like, it was strung, not professionally and all this sort of stuff. And then he graduated into, oh, you know, because, oh, I want this, I want the racket that Federer uses or something. And so I'm like, no, no, I mean, you know, not at first, you don't just out of the gate ha have the greatest shit. You have to earn that. And so then you respect the game differently. And also having that racket that's not so great makes you better because you have to make that racket win for you, you know? And so I really think that it helps you uh, improve your skill level, but also it's just fucking more fun that way. And that's why video games mm -hmm. are the way they are, man. You play a video game and you start out with this character that doesn't have skill level and then you go and and win a level or whatever. And then you go and buy something that makes it better, you know, improve that character. And that's what's mm -hmm. so fun is the progression. And that's what's fun about life is that we start out not knowing shit and we uh, do work and we improve. And then that's mm -hmm. the fun part because once you- The spice all of have... life is in the stories of all the shit yeah. that you did and went through. That's what I was going to say. I was thinking while you were saying the racket thing, it was like first car. 
It's like everybody's first car should be like a fucking giant piece of shit. A, like a gr- a gr- I've had, uh, I, I told agree. the story before. I think about the hundred dollar mm-hmm. car that my dad bought me, but it's like I would not respect any other car the same. Knowing <laughs> I had this car that like would kill me because of fumes, or like I couldn't see over the dashboard, or I had no driver's side window, like shit like that. It makes you respect the next car and be like. All right, I'm gonna take care of this one because the first one I beat to fuck because it was a hundred dollars. Yeah. yeah. And I think um, that's important. I think that's important for like the younger generation to to learn as well. And I think like, you know, the people that we I don't know about you guys, but like the people that we bring in to start, like especially if they're like a you know, a press assistant or whatever, get dirty, man. Get your hands dirty. Go clean that plastic all up. Like, do it all. Don't just like we're not going to give you just all the glamorous jobs. You know, you're going to have to do all of it so that you can appreciate. You know, if you have to clean that up, you're not going to make that mess yourself because then you're responsible for it. And so it, it teaches. You know, even employees like can learn from that mentality. You know, just to like go through the motions and I know Andy and I, I'm pretty sure Dylan, but like, I know you guys all like give them, you know, whether they're sales or whatever, you know, you give them time in the shop so that they can appreciate the, what I would call the art form of, of screen printing and just understanding it and, and knowing it. And, and, you know, just, like I said, just appreciating the whole process of it. Yeah, there was a thing. I have this video on my phone. I have like some stuff that I've saved and I don't really su- subscribe to like a lot of like motivational speaker stuff but like uh i have this video from like simon Sinek or whatever was talking about employees and nowadays there's this generation of people that come in and expect like the high pay right off the bat and they expect like the perfect position and oh i want to be paid the same as so and so and he's like well you don't deserve to be paid what this other person's paid because this other person's been here for 10 years or five years or whatever and yeah you like you're performing in calm seas like they're performing in calm seas like you're both doing the same job but i know that that person who's been here five ten years can also perform in rough seas and you can't like the reason why they're getting what they're getting and they're growing and they're a better person is because they've done the rough seas and they can handle and if anything they can probably handle the rough seas and train you at the same time so like that's why they get what they get and they get the benefits they get and the pay that they get and whatever. And I feel like it's the same thing with us talking about going through shit equipment to good equipment is like, we've done the rough seas. Like we know we're deserving now of like the equipment that we deserve because we've been through all the other shit. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm, Appreciation I'm having, is it is yeah, an important I'm, thing. And I, I think if, if you do like you, you know, like you said, with, even with employees, like put them through the ringer and they'll, they're going to appreciate you know, what they do end up doing and how people do it a little more. Right. So you got the new press. Have you printed a bunch of jobs on it already? Are you guys still kind of like, yeah, we've been, we've been pretty good with it. Um, first week was kind of rough, especially first day, the damn thing falling apart. Um, but since then it's, it's been smooth and it's amazing. We love it. Uh, definitely going to, majorly help our shop with efficiency and not to say that like our quality was ever bad, but you know, you can always get better. So, and, and just having this, I think is going to, we're just going to go to the next level. And then, you know, from there it's, well, now what else do you need, you know, to, to keep moving right. forward? You guys know how it goes. Um, yeah. I'm sure CTS will be next. It probably should have been first, but, and if the, if the old press we had was a 14 color sportsman, CTS probably would have been, you know, the move this well, time. Ron, Ron, who's probably not super far from you is selling his uh, wax unit. Ron at, uh, we talk shirty. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. So, I mean, you might be able to pop in and snag that for a good, what good are you price. getting a seller's commission on it? No, I'm just saying, I know he's not, what is he like <laughs> two and a half hours? No, I know he's probably like two, I, I think like two hours. I think I looked them up before. I'll have to, I'll have to look into it. I think I saw that on, discord actually yeah, some, he just got he some. just got the oh, go ahead go ahead Dylan. i was gonna say he just got the laser so and there was nothing yeah. wrong with his doubt that he just yeah got the laser so that's why i think if you were yeah. in the market for one you could pick it up and save on freight and yeah for sure save on a used unit and all that other stuff so and some might say 
or argue that what he's selling is better than what he got. Some, I, I'm Andy, not saying, I, yeah. I'm not saying who, but Andy some would in particular. say, no, some would, some, <laughs> some may the, say. <laughs> I've heard the argument too. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know if it's true or not. You know, yeah. I'm waiting to hear uh, Tony. Laser. Results. Here's the thing. Laser is the future. Um, LED and laser is the future of screen printing. No doubt. No question. In fact, MNR is not even manufacturing a, a metal halide unit anymore. I had to have ours custom built with scrap parts that were left at the factory. But, um, and, and so it's, it, it's true. And it's true that if you um, get the right, or sorry, I should say, choose the right emulsion for your um, exposure unit, then you can get fantastic results. Um, um, and so the laser is a phenomenal machine. Is it there quite yet? I don't know. I've never worked with one. I've never made, I want to work, I want to make a thousand screens on it. You know what I'm saying? So before I could tell you. Um, but the wax unit is incredibly awesome. And you should um, maybe just graduate, just go to that. We were just talking about, you know, as you step up, maybe the thing to do, it would be like, if you got that wax unit, it would be light years oh, better than yeah. that printer that you have yeah. sitting next to you there. Like light years. <laughs> mm-hmm. the, oh, I'm, I'm not there, knocking that, but. No, I actually just, I actually just was talking to uh, uh, Chris from Denial and we were talking about it and, you know, I told him the same thing. I said, at this point, any CTS would be better than film, you know, even, you know, and, uh, ink chip, you know, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. It's better than film. So if we, um, you know, if we can just graduate to anything, we're going to be right. in a way better boat than we are right now. So and maybe that's the move, you know, maybe, maybe it's the move of, of, you know, of graduating to, to not go all in on a laser right off the bat. You know, maybe we try a, a inkjet or wax for a bit and wait for laser to develop. Dude, get yourself that wax machine, 179 that shit, and um, you're good to go. Like, just write it off. And what was that? Oh, yeah. You know that feeling you get when you um, get a piece of equipment and you've used it for like an hour and you say, how did I even function before this? And if, if somebody asks you, hey, would you go back to doing it the way before? Uh, you you know, like you did it before. And the answer is I would quit screen printing before I went back to film. <laughs> you know the, way, I mean? like I, the way that you just said that yeah. hit me because we've never once talked to somebody who got a CTS and was like, I wish I was doing film again. <laughs> That's <laughs> never happened in the history of ever. Like it's, it's yeah, crazy. I remember. I mean, go ahead. I was going to say, even with, even with the sportsmen, you know, we said that like day two, we we're like, I can't believe we printed on that diamond bag. And they're like, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a great press. Mm-hmm. You know, if anybody has the opportunity to go from manual to a diamond bag, sure. fucking do it. Don't, don't stay manual just because it's not a nicer press. It carried us to this new building, which is just incredible to think about. But now seeing how mm-hmm. this press prints, I don't know how the hell we made it this far with that <laughs> yeah. thing. I remember we got our, when we first went from our small dryer to the Sprint and when we were installing it, I'm like, this thing's a monster. Like I'm an idiot. Like I'm such an idiot. Why did I order this? It's way too big. Who do I think I am? Like I (laughs) fucked up. And then we turned it on and before lunch, I was like, how did we even use that dryer before? It was like a toy. It was like a fake dryer that we had before or something because we were cr- trying like to cram. Easy bake oven. Exactly. Like we were, we were, <laughs> it was super slow. We were cramming shirts on the belt, trying to fold them as we went off the, the presses to, you know, fit them on the, and now all of a sudden we can just basically like throw the shirt over to the belt and it just goes down the thing and it's dry. It's amazing, you know? And so, yeah, we felt, that, we that felt works. the same way. Yeah. We felt the same way when we fired this thing up in April for the first mm-hmm. time you know especially with water base like we, we used to think like oh we'll just double dry them or whatever and you know they'll be great and they were like but they weren't like you know triple drying them is not as good as one pass through like now we're like holy shit like we <laughs> just time they were and good. efficiency like how much time mm-hmm. are you right, wasting like, running shirts through twice 
Oh, dude, we, we, yeah, I would do it in the evenings just so that we didn't hold up production during the day. But it was, you know, it's like, goes back to what we were talking about. You have to do that shit to get right. to the better equipment. Exactly. You have yeah, to yeah. go through those. And appreciate steps. it. And if you're, and, yeah, yeah, and appreciate it. Right. And so that was part of the steps was double drying shit fucking every single night until we got this sprint. And, you know, and then you get that. And yeah, I mean, how do we ever do without it? So, mm-hmm. There's been a lot of that this year for us, which is, which I'm super thankful for, you know, to, to move into this space and like, Oh, I can't believe we did it in the last space. Get this dryer. I can't believe we fucking use that thing before and mm-hmm. get this press. And, you know, we've, we've said it a lot this year. So this year has been really good to us. So we don't have to do the whole backstory. Uh, but like the people listening have, don't know that we have done this all before and heard the whole thing. How did you get into it? You were in, your garage and then you got to this space can you kind of give the, the yeah so i'll give you the the cliff note version um back before i started printing i was brokering printing i've been in like offset and and other printing for my entire career basically so i started brokering printing um and then i was like you know i could do this so i started manually printing like everybody else like in a I think we were in our, I think I did it in my dining room and then my basement and then, um, you know, the, the basement of a rental unit. And then we bought a house and we bought the house with the garage. So then we, you know, we graduated from brokering to manually printing on a dining room table to manually printing in a basement to manually printing in a garage and then auto printing in a garage. And then we finally moved into a warehouse space about two years ago. And then so you were in the garage for how long? We were in the garage for four years. So in four years, we went from just a, a manual and like a, I think it was like a 32 inch, uh, fast text dryer. I forget the name of it, um, to a auto and a 54 inch fast text dryer. And then from there we went to this warehouse space, um, which was kind and, of all the same equipment, but go ahead, Andy. Yeah. And when you say we, those that don't know, you are saying your wife because you work there with your wife. And let's be honest, because um, I work with my wife, too. And if it wasn't he has her, to say this because she's right next to him, I, I couldn't do it without <laughs> her. And um, no, I don't 100%. I don't have to say that. I don't have to say that. That is absolutely from the bottom of my heart. That's sincere. And I would be uh, nothing uh, without her with this business she really helps andy give us a, she thing. can't hear me saying this but give me a wink if you're in trouble <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> she knows uh, yeah. It's all one. Mm-hmm. yeah she has an extra uh, airpod in yeah yeah uh no but you're you're 100 right so when i first started like teaching myself screen printing um this was when my, I, I had a day job. My wife had a day, uh, uh, second shift job because our daughter had, was just born. She was months old. So I was teaching myself screen printing at night. Um, while my wife was at work after my daughter went to bed. Now keep in mind, she's, you know, months old. So she's going to bed at fucking like five o'clock or something. No, it was like six thirty. but so I had a lot of time. So I was teaching myself screen printing. Finally, we got to the point where like, you know, I look, you know, I knew enough. We started taking these orders and whatever. And so then what happened was like, I was wearing myself out, uh, you know, working a day job, coming home, playing dad, being dad, not playing dad, being dad for, uh, you know, a couple hours printing till three, four o'clock in the morning, you know, two, three hours of sleep back up to do it all over again. Um, and so when it got to that point, like when it got to the point where I was printing eight hours a night, that's when we decided to make the move for my wife to quit her job, me to quit my job. And then, so she basically, you know, then she was a stay at home mom for the first, um, couple of years. And then our son was born. And, uh, once he was born, when he was about a year, we hired her sister as a full-time nanny for the kids. So then my wife was working with me for the, she's been in the shop now full-time for the past six years, I think. 
Yeah, that's probably about right. So, and, you know, we're the same way, dude. Like we, we are full blown into this together. Like she's out there reclaiming screens right now. Um, there's nothing that she won't do in this business. Um, she's not a printer. She doesn't know how to print. She could figure it out, but she's not a printer. So outside of printing, she'll do anything and everything from whatever, I mean, whatever we need. And so it's been, I, I definitely could not have done this without her, especially, I think, especially, I think the hardest part, if I didn't have her was when we got to an auto in the garage, there was times where like, if, if my sister-in-law was sick, I would print all day and she would come out and there'd just be stacks and stacks of shirts that she had to fold and lay out. And, and so like, especially at that point in time, when we first got the auto and, you know, moving into this next stage of our business, if she wasn't there, I mean, we probably would have hired someone, but she definitely kept those wheels running and she still does. I mean, she's, you know, she leaves every day at like two 30 to go get the kids off the bus and then, you know, do the home life stuff, like go over their homework with them and, and all that. So it's awesome to have that partnership. I think it's, I think it takes, and I'm sure Andy will agree. I think it takes a certain type of relationship to be able to make that work. There's a lot of people that we know that there's no way they could work together. Um, but we make it work and we've made it work and it, it works incredibly well. I think that's, for, I think you know, that's somewhat true. I have some friends that probably wouldn't do well working with their significant other, but yeah. if they do it and they're put in that situation, they have to figure it out. And that I think can improve your work relationship and then also improve your marriage. If you figure out how to work together, because you do yeah. have to work together in a marriage too. What's her name, by the way, Sarah, Sarah. Yeah. Ducks. High five. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's she's awesome, dude. She's yeah, it, it's amazing, and I agree with you. You know, it I, at the time when we first started working together, it it might have been like looking back now, it might have been a little rough, like going from, you know, like you go from like the majority of people only see their significant other from you know whatever five o'clock, four o'clock, six o'clock on for the rest of the night, but then if you work together and you are with them outside of work like that puts that can make a, a incredible strain on a relationship and so mm -hmm. in the beginning i won't lie like it might have been like you know like butting heads a little bit more than we did prior to that but now i mean it, it's a it's incredible like it, it definitely has made us stronger for sure yeah so anyway um so we kind of got off on a tangent there but <laughs> So we went to the warehouse. We we rented this warehouse. Our plan was to always try and buy a, a building um, for numerous reasons. Uh, I think one of the bigger reasons was like we're looking at it as part of our exit strategy. Um, the other reasons were just like we really want to be able to like you guys all know and everybody listening to this probably knows how expensive this industry is. I mean, just electrical alone, you know, HVAC, you know, all this stuff, like you, you put all that money into another property and it's not yours. Um, so for that, like, you know, just the other simple fact of the matter is that leasing is more expensive, you know, than buying for the most part. Um, so we always wanted to buy a building. So we rented this space for a year. We signed a short lease for a year until we found this building. We found it, um, last February. So almost two years ago, it took six months to close. And then it took eight months to six to eight months to build it out. And so we moved in in April. Uh, so it's been quite a ride the past two years going from my garage with, you know, that small dryer and an auto to this big building with a big ass dryer, two autos, you know, we've added couple people since then um it, it's been stressful but it's been worth it for sure i forgot yeah. we had this discussion yeah congrats by the way oh, and yeah. i forgot we had this conversation <clears throat> last time because it's been a few weeks and i think it's a really good one you know because you have this decision once you're 
growing out of a garage or whatever space, a basement or a bedroom or, you know, a smaller space, you have this decision to make. And that is buying versus leasing. And I think we got into a debate about, or, or maybe it was more of a discussion about which is the right thing to do. Because, you know, you have and you have this opportunity, let's say, to buy a building, but that building, you typically have to put 20% down. And that's a significant chunk of change uh, that you could use for maybe a new auto or a CTS machine or whatever that is. And so which is going to make you scale faster? Or do you want, is that your goal even to scale faster? Maybe your goal is to own a building and, you know, and to scale slower. And so you have this, these decisions to make as you're, as you're a growing business going from, you know, the space to a larger space. Do I, do I buy or do I lease? And I think there's, I think there's pros and cons, you know, it's not necessarily, um, you know, such a clear decision all of the time. I totally agree. And I, I think what we kind of discussed was, was it, like you said, it really just depends on, on what your, what fork in the road, I guess you're at at that time. And for us, it was, it was kind of both, you know, we needed to grow the production, but we also needed that space to grow the production. And so for us, like when we looked at it, you know, we took out a SBA loan. So it was, I think it was 10% down. Um, which at, which the cost of the building was, I would say the 10% down was less than the sportsman we just bought. Um, so, you know, when you look at that amount of money, you could have got a CTS with it. You couldn't have gotten a sportsman with it. Um, but either way, getting past that down payment, you know, then for us, it was like, okay, if we can just do the down payment what does it look like after that, you know, to rent mm -hmm. this space, the same space that we have, the guy actually did want to rent it to us. It would have been $2,000 more a month to rent this space than to own it. So right. even after one year, let alone 30 years or five years or two years, you know, that obviously for us, it makes more sense. And so we were, we were kind of at this fork where like we needed both, you know, we really needed to grow production, but we also really needed space to be able to do it. And so the timing was right for us to buy a space. I'm not sure what it's like where you guys are at, um, but we had already been looking for and looking at spaces. And additionally, this was the other thing we discussed, looking at building a shop. We had already been looking at all this for well into a year. And where we're at specifically, these types of buildings just don't come up. You know, you can get a building, right? You can get a commercial space, but it's going to come with, walls that you have to tear down it's going to come with you know low ceilings it's going to come with support beams and all like these free span steel buildings where it's just six to ten thousand square feet of completely wide open space open space yeah yeah they don't come up they don't come up in our area so the fact that one came up and it was what we thought was cheap it just seemed right to us at that point in time to do that and the thought process was always, well, we'll just, you know, and I've always been in the mindset, like, if I got to work harder to, to make it happen, like, we'll just work harder. And so that's what I did for over a year, you know, and I'm still doing it till we find the right people. But if I got to come in and print Saturdays, I'll come in and print Saturdays, because it's going to get us to that goal faster. And so that's kind of, that's kind of where we landed. Um, and now we're here and we own this space. Um and it just, it's, it feels really good to know that like, we're already at the point where we're building equity for our exit strategy. Um, and so I think it just depends on, on the shop and, and what your, I don't know, like what your goals and needs are at the time. I don't even want to say needs because our needs were all of it, all of the above. But what's your what's your biggest goal? Yeah, I think the goal is this more important like, though, because if you're planning for a need, then it's like you're going to shoot yourself in the foot for the next need. Yeah. Cause you're not yeah, ready exactly. for it. You need to be like, I need what I want to get what I need, but I also want to plan for what I want this company to turn into. Right. I don't want to move right. again. Right. And so for, uh, yeah, I'm not moving again. Um, <laughs> and that's, a, that's kind of the beauty of the, of the property. It's, it's over. It's, I think it's an acre and a half, but we're, so in our township, in this specific township where this building is, um, 
in the zoning. So we're zoned village commercial. So in other words, it's commercial, but we're near houses. Um, so in that zoning, you have to be, uh, I want to say 54% property utilization for your commercial space or less. And so the, the current utilization allows us to add another 10 to 15,000 square feet and still be within that property, property utilization. Mm -hmm. Um, so we, we have the ability here to expand to more than double what we are in size currently and still be within that township guideline. And so that was another like high selling point of this property for us was knowing that like we can get here. And if we fill this out, Mm -hmm. we do have room to keep growing. And I think the amount of room that we can grow, I don't know that I ever really want to be bigger than that. You know, I don't even know if I want to be that big. Maybe that's too big. Sounds um, like you've got like the perfect setup right now. And so that was the right move trying, for you, yeah. is to, is to yeah, do the yeah, building. Options. Um, before we, um, we're going to have to get to listener questions, but before we do, I have one topic I'd like to discuss because um, I had no idea that um, my boy Dylan did it like this, but uh jared akt jared he asked in our um in our mild boys group a question earlier and he says does anyone have any tips for avoiding 20 percent garments having stitching ripped out with tearaway tags my production team is fighting with me to just cut the tags but naturally clients hate that and so do i so why is it called tearaway if it rips their product yes i'm talking about experienced people who are doing this and uh so like what are your tips and then Dylan says that he cuts them out like with the scissors. And then uh, uh, S- Scotty over at King screen has, of course, has a video of him cutting them out with scissors. And so <laughs> I have a uh, cut out versus tear out. Like who, what do you do? If they're tear away, we tear them. And, and I think the easiest way to do it without, um ripping the seam because we used to rip seams all the time and if you just grab them ahead of where you're going to rip them and rip them we don't tear seams and the other thing is if they're two pieces of paper sometimes like gildan for instance you have to rip one piece at a time so rip rip Mm. and then they come out but we we always like firmly grab the seam so that it can't pull the stitching as it as it comes out and there are some obviously that are right you know there's See, like that's I, the I remember problem that's the problem and that's the reason with the discussion is is that we all realize that they're tear away and there is a technique and there is whatever to pull them out but the problem is is like when things get monotonous like you're you're like okay cool i have a five thousand piece order that i need to detag and relabel like that person doing those tags isn't gently grabbing each shirt and like grabbing the right spot and tugging and then setting it down and grabbing the next shirt and tugging. They're fucking with a stack and they're like flink, 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 fucking ripping tags out. Blink. They're flinking. They're you flinking know. the yeah. shit out of these tags. And well, then, I think you can I think you can flink them efficiently <laughs> and still not rip the collar i mean maybe you know right i like you the the problem is is that it does as long as you're flinking and not it does happen it does happen and i like your idea of the single flink you know because i've never that's going to slow you down right it's going to take you twice as long but if you just pull one tag and then the other i think you then you're tugging less on the threads that are keeping them in there we just got to the point where we would have jobs where You know, it's like a fucking 12 color front, four color back. No. And it's all printed and done. Didn't do 12. And then you're like, cool, I need to put a tag on it. And then you go to pull the tag and you rip the seam out and you're like, cool, now this shirt's fucking ruined. Oh, first of all, we always tag. Hold on. We always tag before we print. That's first. First off, that'll save you your resetting or whatever that is. Always tag before you print. Here's a. You're going to tell me to resew. Yeah, to <laughs> no, find yourself. No, okay. no, no, hold on, hold on. Do you really want to set up? Let's say, okay, no, let's I don't. say. That's why I cut them. <laughs> okay, so let's say, um, has anybody ever done a time study, cutting versus ripping? No. I haven't, because I'm not going to cut them. I have. You're going to you're gonna be faster. You're going to be faster ripping them, for sure. Oh, yeah. No doubt, 100%. Uh, yeah, for sure. So in the event that 
Uh, so let's say just over the course of a year, you know, you do X amount of tags and you're 20% faster because you rip them versus cutting them. In that time, let's say you, let's say you have a job like that, right? And so it's due to orders, you know, 200 shirts, but only five of them are extra small. And your team miss rips them, misflinks them, and <laughs> rips the seams on all five of them. What's going to be better? Just having them resewn by a seamstress. We can our seamstress will of resew course. a collar for for twenty cents. Of course, eighty a, a dollar for five for those five shirts versus an hour or whatever to set that job up and reprint them because you just I just don't have up. somebody to resell them. Well, you're Dill, you're doing it wrong anyway. Like you I'm don't print, up. you I'm don't out. print them. I fuck this industry. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. You I'm just I, know I know you're before. I, you just don't I know your town before. is small, Dylan. I've I've passed through it. It's it's small. <laughs> I actually probably could get the lady who does my embroidery to do it, but I'm just saying, like it's it's one of those things when in the heat of the moment, in the passion, <laughs> where you're just like. I don't want to fucking ruin any more shirts. Let's just cut these. Don't don't tell Dylan. And then we just cut them through his town. You'd have to say you stopped and enjoyed the scenery and a you know no, like chilled so and there's no scenery to see. I was I was going to I was going to Ithaca <laughs> from my dad's house. My dad lives about an hour and a half from Dylan, and I was going through Ithaca, and it was in on a Saturday on a morning, and we got to Whitney Point, and we're like, man, there's got to be like some coffee around here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're like driving down these side roads and I'm like, mm. there's no coffee. Like, like there's nothing in this town. This town mm. sucks. This town's <laughs> awful. It's piece and of I didn't town. realize, well, I didn't realize that this was two or three years ago. I didn't realize that that was the town that you lived in. And so I'm like, this town sucks. Like, let's get out of here. And so we go to this back road and we're just driving down this alleyway or whatever it is, like your road out front. And I look over to my left and I'm like, holy shit, there's upstate merch and is. I was like, I had no idea this is where your shop was. Mm -hmm. It's a small town, dude. Like that's a that's a small town. I'm I'm not shocked that you do a lot of non-local business. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, there's gotta be someone in that town that does what uh wedding dresses that does that's what we did. We went and found this lady. Um, she's just this nice old lady, you know, she does alterations and we would just take her like sewing projects. And so whether it was like hem tags on a thing, like I never really saw the need to bring she's that sitting in. sitting there on her fucking pedal singer. Like, yeah, <laughs> well, and she's, she's experienced. And so right. now we yeah, have two people. <laughs> now we have two people. And the one lady, she like, we don't cut comfort colors tags anymore. You know, our clients would rather pay more to have them surgically removed, as we call it. She goes in, she cuts the seam, she re sews it, and she does hundreds of them a week for us. And so, and like maybe we're in a little different scenario, right? So we're already sending shirts to this lady two to three times a week. Um, her husband actually is our maintenance guy in the shop. And so he just like takes them home and brings them back with him. That's awesome. So maybe That's we're in a different setup. scenario, but like if we, rip a tag out and we screw the collar up. Hey, just send it to Michelle and you know, we'll get it back later this week. That's not a bad the job. out. In all honesty, that's not a bad scenario for any shop listening is to find somebody specifically that could do something like that. Not that we want to manage all of like ripped from tags, but like you said, like doing, I mean, I know there's some shops that do it in house, but like, if you're not doing it, yeah. in house, like sewing on hem tags or anything like that, a lot of people it shy away like, from doing that kind of stuff, my, myself included, because I don't have somebody to sew shit on. Yeah. And she'll do like patches on beanies. She'll do patches on um, unstructured hats. Um, you know, I've offered it at one point we were doing, we had a client that was doing patches, like hundreds and hundreds of patches on structured hats. And so I was like, hey, I got a, I got a post bed that I bought and never really took the time to figure out what about if we just put it in your house and you can do these for us too? And she was mm -hmm. down to do it. Um, and then that client ended up leaving um, corporate bullshit. But uh, so now we don't do as much of that. Like we don't do them by the hundreds anymore. So now I'll just have our embroidery company do them, but it is really nice to have that sewing lady too. What does she charge you? Stuff. For, like to do a bean, to sew a patch on a beanie. What is, what does she charge you? 
Uh, it's like it's like a dollar, and then to surgically remove the the comfort color tags, I think it's forty cents. Forty, and our cents. clients don't mind. That's our clients cheap. don't mind paying it. And no, that's, I, that's it. wow. Because you get a shirt that doesn't have the clear cut tag in it, and it saves us the headache of mm. doing it. I mean, if you got to figure, if you're going to pay a employee, how many of them like comfort color tags are not easy to cut out? You know they some of them they blow apart when you cut them out and then you're there taking all that you're probably when I was at Gildan and we were sitting at the board table talking about issues or you know concerns that we have as an industry and all this other stuff like that was my biggest one of two of my biggest like complaints was like dude something has to be done about these tags um because for all of us who want to relabel comfort colors it's a fucking nightmare and yeah. uh they had a valid argument. They're like, that's also like, it's catch 22 because for a lot of people, they want the shirt relabeled, but there's also a shitload of people who want that tag specifically in that shirt because that to them, it's the value. Yeah. Like of having and that, that was, canvas comfort colors tag. In it. Yeah. I contacted them a long time ago and they, they gave the same argument. And when they gave the argument, of course you're not happy. You're like, shit, man, I wish you would. Right. You not, would give me that <laughs> argument but but then it's like i understand that because that's the same right. thing that our customers are doing they're putting their tag in because that's a value to their end client and so right. it goes it, you got to expect it to that's go the thing with place. companies like that though too is we don't all think about is it's not they're not just here to service the fucking screen printers like yeah. it's a brand that's used everywhere like it's sold in major right. stores and like it's everywhere like they make fucking underwear yeah. and like all these other shit for like walmart and you know all these other huge stores and it's like it's not just us like as much as you'd like to yeah. be like fix everything for me in my tiny shop in a tiny part of the country it's like well we're yeah. this yeah. gigantic ship yeah um, no totally and, and i agree with them i mean i get it so it's like i said though it's a, it's a sweet setup and i would suggest any print shop to find a similar setup it's saved us tons and tons of reprints tons of like you know we'll even like it won't even be our fault you know you get a nice job printed and three of the shirts just have like a hem you know in the shoulder that's missing and so i'll just send them to her and she'll fix them up and you know it's you could just say hey we missed you know there was three that were damaged but you know you've already printed them you've already put the time in for right 50 cents she'll fix three of them and and you're back you know you save yourself dollars and and that shit adds up throughout the year so yeah um i got a, a side to this so as far as like finishing i wanted to ask because it's something i'm trying to think of and deal with right now is folding and bagging what are you doing josh for folding and bagging are you just manually mm. folding them and bagging them yourself manually folding and bagging mm -hmm. yeah andy i know we you have had to a figure customer. that out too you had a big customer that wanted to do a lot more folding and bagging. And then now you're not doing that anymore. Cause we had a discussion of you selling me your folder. My problem is, is I'm out of fucking space. So if I wanted to go to M and R and buy a folding bagging line, I would not have a place for it. So my debate right now is do I go buy say Andy's folder and then get a semi-auto bagger? To where I just have like two kind of like four by four things on casters that when I need them, I can wheel them out into a room and put them together and fold them bag. And or, is your is your folder one of those like speedy T? Yeah, yep, that's, that's what it is. And so we, we had thought about one of them. Mm -hmm. We actually have a, a decent sized client who wants all of their garments folded, but not bagged, which I I absolutely love that because I don't like, yeah. you know, bagging them as how much can you really charge for it and, and stay yeah. highly profitable. And so like the folding is the easy part. It's for us, it's the bagging. So I thought about getting one of them because they could, they could be folding them coming out of the belt almost, you know, or, ethically, or just about ethically don't love bagging because of the whole single use plastic thing. Yeah. Well, me either we just get so many customers to ask for it. And it's like, right now we're doing it all manually. And we just did a order uh, last week where it was like, it was a, you know, couple thousand shirts that needed folded and bagged. 
And we had three people working on it for two days. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. And how much were are you really like, going to make at the end of that? Right. You know, like it, that, it wasn't necessarily time. to make money on doing the folding and bagging. It was just added on because that's what the customer needed. You know what I mean? It was going to a 3PL and they needed it folded and bagged and stickered and everything else. Right. Um, so you just do that but to those, help your client. But also the three people that worked on it when they were done were like, hey, fuckhead. Like next time you take an order like this, give us more time because they were like yeah. hustling to get it done and out the door. So that's why now I'm looking at as reactionary to that and being like, maybe now's a good time for me to buy the semi-auto bagger and the folder. That way, next time we get a job like that, it's like, okay, let's wheel these two things into the warehouse and then crank through them. Yeah. And it's obviously all about efficiency. You know, those three employees for three days, you know, they could have probably knocked that out in half a day. Well, I could have and had then, one person working on it, yeah. you know, even two yeah. and saved an employee and it wouldn't have been yeah. three days. It would have been an afternoon. The Speedy right. T has um, different settings and different modes, you know, for short sleeve, long sleeve and all, all sorts of stuff. And one of the modes is where it folds and then it stacks them. You know, there's a stacker on the end of it and it the stacker moves up and down based on how tall your pile is getting. But there's another mode where it, goes up. it just, yeah, so it doesn't fully put it on the stack. It just keeps it just right here, which is uh, allows you or the, the per, you could even have two people. You could have one person that's putting it on there and it folds it and then it leaves it up for a person on the other end. And they're the one that's sliding bagging. the bag, right? Yeah, it slides the bag over that little arm and then by the time they're reaching for this other bag, then this other person is already, you know, putting it on. And so it folds it. So you could, if you wanted to, you could run it at a even faster pace, but if it's a single operator, you know, you can still do it. And so it has that option to bag it. Now it's not auto bagging it. Like you're talking about, you know, in, in line. Right, but my, in my opinion, and I, this mm -hmm. might vary depending on the person, but in my opinion, the hardest part about the whole thing is bagging because I don't know if it's just me, but with my fucking sausage hands, grabbing a shirt and trying to fit it in a 10 by 13 poly bag, you kind of have to like put a corner in and then hold the other side, put the other corner in, slide it in the bag, peel it, flip it, the whole thing. And it's like, if I can find a way to, the reason why I wanted semi-auto bagger is because there's no peeling and flipping and sticking. It's just sliding into the bag and then it, you know, heat seals it and it drops down into a thing. Um, but I think even the folder that holds it up and then you slide the bag over it, that's way easier than like holding the shirt in one hand, holding the bag in another hand and trying to make it work. And maybe that's, maybe that's the good, <clears throat> good stepping point, you know, maybe that's buy the stepping the folder. stone. Yeah. Like buy Andy's folder, um, for, you know, whatever and, and see how yeah. that works out. And then if it's, and then if you're still getting slaughtered by the bag, and then you yeah. know that that's like, okay, now we need, you know, a bigger solution. So we had like, I, I want to say probably through the first year of the pandemic, we had this pretty large client. Um, they were based out of Canada and we were printing, folding and bagging thousands of pieces a month for them. And so I was just about to purchase something to solve this problem because it was just tying up so much time. And, um, right before I did it, they were like, you know what, like customs is just killing us. Like we're going to have you only print X amount. That's going to be for us distribution. And then we'll take care of the Canada stuff in Canada. And so those numbers got cut back significantly because they couldn't afford the customs on it anymore. Like it just didn't make right. sense. They could afford it. It just didn't make sense. They could do it more efficiently through Canada right. and just right. use us as their U S printer. And so yeah. I'm glad I didn't purchase that. And I don't know, like, who your clients are or, or who this client is, but you know, maybe it's smarter just to do a, a midway solution yeah, and see how I it all works that. and make sure the clients are going to hang around and make sure everything's going to stay. And then, and then upgrade, you know, it goes uh, back to that original conversation. It, it's all silly. part of the process. I'll personally pack it real good, you know, in a crate so that it's safe and ship and it. And then UPS will lose it. And, and you'll, tell me, that, you'll tell me you swore you shipped it. Anything that happens to it is not my problem. Once it leaves here, though. <laughs> that's hey, on go, you. Ahead, go ahead and crate it up and I'll send you a check. <laughs> or some smooches or whatever it is that you want for it. Yeah. Because I will take it. Deal. Um, 
All right, let's do some listener questions that I don't have prepared or pulled up or ready for or anything like that. I've got one. I've got it right here. 211 Print Shop says, let's go. But he says it with lots of O's. Um, Hold on. Can we pause for one minute? My bad. No worries. We're all taking a little break. So we we have, um, with the new press, we got two flashes and we have a, we need three for this job. Um, We have a third one here. It's going to, get wired up in the next week or two. Um, but so we have an infrared in right now is the third flash and it's like an inch too short. So mm. we're trying to figure out how to get it in further to be able to run the job. Speaking, I don't know if we can. Speaking of old school days, I remember before we had our oversized flash, we have that Vastex like 1820 or whatever it is. Before we had yeah. that, we would print oversized jobs and someone literally would sit there hold the flash over the top half and then roll it forward over the bottom half and then <laughs> bring it back and put it forward. I've, I've done a lot. I can't say I've ever done that though. Yeah, um, we've done that. Yeah, yeah, that's the worst too because you're used to your your quartz flashes and they turn off and mm-hmm. your infrared doesn't turn off. And so then when somebody comes to visit you and you're like, hey, what's up, bro? And then you go to talk to them and then you forget to half station your press and then it's sitting under the flash and the pallet catches on fire. That would never happen though, right? No, this is, yeah, this is like deja vu or something. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> it's an only time, boys. Not yeah, that letting sucks. it happen again. But that is kind of like the downside, right? It's like, mm. you really, you really don't want to do. Spinning it around, laying it on that tiny little way. No, I'm, I'm saying take the top off, slide the base in, and then put the top back on. What are you trying to do with the flash? We're trying to get the, so the infrared, we have the head supports on this press. So the, the end support. Oh beams. yeah. Yeah. The, in, the infrared has the vertical, you know, pole that the infrared sits on. The problem is it hits the head support mm. and then it's a, it's a 20 inch long flash, but it's an inch too short because it's stuck out four inches or whatever right? because of the head support. So I'm mm-hmm. telling him if we can get the base to the inside, then maybe we could put it on and, and be able to use that third flash. So later on, when you find out that the flash stand ripped a head off of your off your press let us know how that would go <laughs> all right so how yeah, about um you know. how about treat it like the takana and just, just take it off of the it. base take it off the base and lock it in your print head is it big enough i don't i was gonna say i don't i don't think the print head well move your take the back you know how you can adjust put it on an back. empty can you put it set it on top of an empty frame yeah, or take, you know how the back is, you can slide it all the way forward, right? You, I'm, watching back, the camera. I'm watching them on the camera right now. To see I'm saying they're... like, you know how, I don't know, Josh, have you ever seen my cool that shit down fan? Where it's yeah, just like an yeah, empty yeah, yeah. screen and then I put a box fan on top of it. I wonder if you could take an empty frame and just set the flash on top of the empty frame. Yeah, You guys out. got three minutes. Can I pause for three yeah, minutes? Yeah, do whatever you got to do, dude. Okay, all right. <laughs> Yeah, that didn't work. So he's going to try running it wet on wet. Uh, If it doesn't work, we'll just have to figure out something else. All right. Listener questions. Uh, Dub Caesar asks, that ink holder on press looks genius. Are you now that you have the sportsman already fabricating ink holders for it? I have started to look into it. Yeah, I've started to brainstorm some ideas because those ink holders, man, they're they're amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, so for those who don't we, know, Josh, Josh had fabricated a, basically a tray with sides that attaches to the diamond back to hold his ink cup that he's using on the end of each head. Yeah. And it, it's been, it was awesome. Like having those and, and not looking for the ink or like having it on a cart or whatever. So we would love to find a way to do that on the sportsman. Obviously the problem is that the heads flip up on the end because they're end clamps um, on the diamond back. That was much easier to fabricate. Uh, somebody posted in discord. It might've been Chris from denial. He 3d printed like a card 
like an ink card cup that he attached to the vertical head support bar. And so that's kind of the pathway I'm going right now is developing something that fits our courts that can be mounted to the support beam vertically. Yeah. Um, so I'll let you guys know what I come up with. Yeah, let me know because I'll take I'll take some. I'll order yeah, some for sure. Fab guy. Uh, next question is, uh, where did you find your graphic artists? And uh, well, they said Jimmy, the creator, asks, where did you find your graphic artists? Uh, because, whew, um, are you in the Pretty same good. boat as me, where you're using specific freelancers for certain things? I know we both kind of get like ninety percent of the artwork is from the customer. But yeah, with that yeah. said, we also get a lot of people ask us for that kind of art because they see the kind of art that we make. Yeah, we we're the same way. I, I would say probably even closer, like 95 or 90. Like we very rarely do designs for people, but we do have a few um, designers that are that we that we could say like hey if you like what we posted here like we have a designer that could do something similar to that right. or like within that realm of like graphic art style um and we do like me and my printer are both graphic designers we both went to school for it um so we can do a little bit ourselves i try not to just because it's so time consuming um but if, if a really good client like just it just happened last week a really good client came to us and was like hey you know we we want to do these promo shirts you know i want to do like a really large run of them but because they're like giveaways to like distributors and stuff like we really don't want to put you know a thousand dollars into our graphic artist to do something for this right, right are you guys interested you know and they gave us a budget and it's you know it's feasible because i know that they're not going to be nitpicky about it and and say you know we got to make a hundred changes like it's going to be whatever we come up with is going to be good enough for them for this specific use um, so yeah, to answer the question, we have, we have artists that we've sourced over the years, um, but we don't do a lot of, uh, you know, most of what we're Custom posting stuff. is not. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, two dank danks as, uh, does he only use rollers thoughts about rollers versus statics pros and cons? Well, we got to wrap this up in a few minutes, right? So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, we only do rollers, uh, unpopular opinion. We love them. Um, I was statics before rollers. Now take that with a grain of salt. Cause I was statics on a manual before rollers. Um, our, our entire auto career has been rollers uh, for us. We just love being able to control them and restretch them in house when need be. Um, and uh, I think there's, I could foresee a time when our shop gets to the proper size that like, it's no longer, cost effective for us to run them anymore um but I've, I've been running the numbers and for now i still feel like we're better off running rollers and restretching them ourselves versus sending out and i don't know when we'll get to that point but for us right now they're perfect we love them um so i'm not going to switch so until the hand is is forced if, if it's ever do, forced if you do get to that point we know a guy mm -hmm. What's his name? Bob or Jim? Or? <laughs> it's James. It's actually James. James. Okay. There was Bob, one more uh, question, uh, Dylan, that was in there. And I think it would be a good one because I see a box sitting back there in the background. And it's it talks about your custom black boxes. Can you show can can we see the rest of that? You want to grab that box and show us? Can I see? <laughs> can you do a little peek? Well, Josh is actually the one who hooked me up. Uh, what a couple of years ago now with look Columbia at that container, thing. it's beautiful. Wow, it's a handsome box. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I take uh, I take branding and imaging and our like image super serious. Um, like I think just even like the shop, like for me, it's it's arguably one of the most important things next to like customer service and quality of product is just like how we present ourselves. Um, mm -hmm. I agree. And so we've been doing custom boxes for a long time. And like Dylan said, we found this uh, Columbia container company. And now from what I understand, the dude is like printing 
dozens of screen printer boxes, which dude, is awesome. so many. Yeah. He, he's such a nice dude. Um, unfortunately those were, yeah, I love them too. I, I really like Sean. Unfortunately, those are not produced by him. He could not do all black with scores and full bleed like that. So he had to find another company. Um, <clears throat> but we, we spent a lot of time developing and designing and doing that box um, and a ton of time finding the right company. It wasn't so much like Sean's company couldn't do them, but it wasn't so much finding any company that could do them, but like the right company. And so this company, you know, we did like a tour when these boxes were made. I, I did like a whole Instagram stories on it, but it's really cool. Like our boxes are made from the waste of other boxes that they produce. And then just like how they recycle things and how they recycle their dead ink, like all of that was important to us. And so finding that company and it turns out they're like 10 miles from the shop. Um, but I, I was, I was on a hunt for that company for at least a year trying to find not only somebody that could do it, but somebody that could do it with like the same mindset of us as like, how do we reduce, like we, we want this, right? Like we could easily send them out in the boxes they came in. Um, but for our branding and imaging, I really wanted right. these boxes, like what we have. Yeah. What are so, you, what are you paying per box for something like that? It's obviously quantity dependent. But I think it's like two something a box, which may sound like a lot. Um, that's actually not bad. I was that's but, lower than I thought you were going to say. Yeah, I think I was paying like I don't get a ton though because I don't have a ton of space. I think I order like maybe two thousand at a time. Well, so yeah, and that two that first run we only did a thousand because I wanted to make sure that they were like what we were expecting right. before we before we ran them and even at a thousand, they were less than $3. Um, so we, we need to reorder now. And I, I don't know what quantity we're going to get. We have to, like you said, you got a lot out. of room now. So yeah. Yeah. And we have like a, a loft up here that we can store them in. Um, Do you order different it's sizes? Really the, no. So this box is actually scored. Um, so it's multi-depth. So That's you what can, have too. yeah, you can cut them down so that you maximize your, I guess, minimize your airspace in it because we know that, you know, UPS is charging by the size, regardless of if you're shipping a peanut or a brick, um, you know, they're going to charge you by the size of the box. So ours it's are dimensional weight. Yeah. Dimensional weight. So we can cut them down to fit. And I, I think the sizes that we have, like the smallest size is really good for like 50 pieces. Then the next size, you know, is, is 75. And then the next size is good for like a hundred. What yep. about hoodies? Same thing. Or it would just be just like normal. Yeah. It would be 24 yeah. pieces of box. Yeah. Yeah. So we've been yeah, flying we're... through boxes now that hoodie season's here. Mm -hmm. and obviously like, you know, you look at a, you look at a order, let's say it's like 300 and some hoodies, like 350 hoodies. Like that might be 30 cartons going out. So that's, you know, 80 bucks, 90 bucks out in boxes. But for us, like those customers, like for me, if it were me spending that kind of money on a hoodie order to get them in these awesome, nice, fresh boxes that clearly have been packed with care versus like reuse boxes that are taped up to hold them together, you know, and all of that. Like for me, mostly least, tape. this is, yeah, mostly. Yeah. <laughs> and I, that's kind of where, where I justified it and looked at it. Like if I'm the customer, I'm getting that palette of these perfectly like aligned boxes and being like, damn, these people really, put the time and effort and care into this product versus like just, you know, a palette that's falling over because the boxes are getting crushed or whatever. And so it's obviously money going out the door, but it's, it's also a return because you're, you're presenting yourself as this like top tier printer. And, um, we have found no problem charging more than a lot of other shops. And I don't know, like it, it could be, the overall package of customer service. But I also think it's like, you know, the the way we present ourselves and the the quality of work that we do. Yeah, I agree. It's all in the branding. Yeah. Um, all right. Are you ready for some quick takes? Sure. Okay, Andy, hit it. Pop tarts, strawberry, cinnamon, or strawberry. 
Doesn't even matter. Whatever you're going to say, it's strawberry. Yeah, I was going to say raw eggs. egg. Raw yeah, egg. we turned that strawberry. Yeah, you could have stopped at <laughs> strawberry. But do you do strawberry 100%. with like no frosting or strawberry with frosted? Come on, man. Who does no frosting? Me. Raise your hand. <laughs> He's like, I knew it. Me. <laughs> <laughs> frosting all the way. Okay. If you're eating a pop tart, you gotta, you gotta also, like rarely, rarely. Like I wouldn't even think I would eat one now. A pop tart. Hmm. I haven't. So had I buy. In a long time. I buy um, the same things from Costco for our break room. The same snacks, basically. And there's like seven or eight different snacks, and one of them is pop tarts, and they are by far the most popular. Really. Really? Yeah, we get pop tarts too, but I just get the strawberry frosted box. Yeah, they have like okay. a pack of like whatever thirty packs of pop tarts or something. We do a little variety when we can. Yeah. Maybe we'll we try them. We we need some snack switch ups here. It gets a little mm-hmm. stale sometimes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, good movies, shows, or books you're into right now? Um, so I think the last time I said the Watcher for the show. And I think I'm going to stick with it. it. It's getting better. I really, so we really still like it. Um, it's on, I forget, man. One of the, I want to say Netflix, maybe. Um, I think that's apparently right. it's based on a true story, but yeah, the watcher is really good. We've been watching that. And then I don't, I listen to like audio books from time to time. Admittedly, I'm not much of like a book person. So I really can't give any, you know, That's suggestions okay. there. But I'm 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 with you. That is okay. Um, yeah. So here is the next question. I'm going to frame it like this. So you know the show alone. You go yes. um to we love that show the, yep. the North the the British Columbia or whatever for a year. You're allowed to take I think it's like ten things. So based on that, just like Brandon. Did, has done a traveling screen printer let's say you're going to go to a shop for a week what's one thing you bring mm. i'm gonna say pop tarts. that's tough pop tarts huh? <laughs> maybe i'm gonna say either definitely a water jug um, I've been in some sketchy water situations. I don't know, man. Maybe just say maybe your AirPods in case their music sucks. Just say <laughs> your thinking cap. Thinking cap. Okay. Yeah. I thought that. I thought that. <laughs> I was waiting for an man, that's a tough question because, like, it, you get you start thinking, like, okay, if I were in another shop, like, they probably have everything mm-hmm. that you need to do what you need to do so what's I was, like the personal item that you i was want? trying to think of that too of like what's the thing that you would take but the only thing i could think of is if there's something that you created that they don't have like something that's unique to your shop like what would you take from your shop to wouldn't it be shop? cool if you showed up you know to print it at a shop for a week and then you put this briefcase out on the on the table you opened it up and it was just like your own squeegee like a like you like a pool <laughs> stick like you would bring it to play pool like or whatever a bowling ball yeah, so yeah. you open up this case and it's a squeegee in there and it's like shiny and perfect. And then you like assemble it a little bit and you're like, all right, boys, <laughs> you know, and then, like, move over. That'd be cool. That'd be funny. Yeah. It's like gold and gold plated or something, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's a tough question, though. I like the question. Wasn't prepared for it. I'd have to, I'll think on it and let you guys know if I have a better answer, but it's kind of an interesting question. Okay. Uh, what is something random that brings you joy? uh karma karma when it happens to somebody else in front of you when it happens to somebody else yeah Yeah. when you're getting tailgated or something and then a mile up the road they're pulled over i've seen that i saw a guy flying through traffic he was like a dude in a a sports car like it was um had the top down and everything he was probably doing like 110 like past us and then like a couple miles up the road, he hit a deer. He was like on the side of the road, the whole front of his car was fucking annihilated. And I was just like, that's, oh, man. that's the best thing ever. Yeah. Um, okay, Annie, finish her off. What's for Din Din? 
I have no idea. I am generally in the dark. Until well, you haven't I eaten lunch home. yet either. So yeah, I haven't even eaten lunch. And at this point it's quarter to three. I don't know that I will. I'll probably just find some snacks Starf. and yeah, go home hangry, you know, <laughs> seems, seems yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, we do, I, I mentioned it last time we do, um, one of those, uh, they're not prepped meals, but they're meal kits. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure which one we're on hello fresh or something. So I'm sure it'll be one of them. We do them four days a week, I think right now. Um, and then the other three we, we make or eat out. Awesome. So, yeah. Andy, what'd you have for lunch today? Nothing yet. Peanuts. Mm. I had water. <laughs> yeah. And a, and a Dr. Pepper. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I would have remembered my leftover turkey. Mm-hmm. It's a sad day, but it'll be there for tomorrow. Yeah. Well, Josh, we appreciate you uh, wanting to do this again with us. I know it's rough to even do it once with us, but you did it twice. So you're, you're uh, a it's all right. It's all right. Um, yeah. Sorry. The first one got lost. That's okay. Well, we're, we're back to the OG now. We're back to we are. Zoom and it's going to be wonderful and we're never going to have an issue ever again. It's and taking care of us so far. It's all good. Yeah. Knock on wood. Yeah. Well, well thanks, I appreciate dude. it, guys. Yeah, thanks. Hopefully, get back uh, to work. Yeah. Hopefully it all shapes up good when I get back out there. Yeah. So. All right, dude. We'll catch you later. Later. See you later. later.